Because he is. But what did he do for us? Amen. Because why? Amen. So we're coming in tonight and we have little frowns on our faces and look unhappy, look miserable, and look about, I can't take no more. But praise God, we can put a smile on our face. Praise God that we have a Savior who loves us. These old wretched people that we are that turn against Him on a daily basis, but He loves us. But why do we have to walk around looking so miserable? I've learned a long time ago, it's, it doesn't make, make any difference what's going on in your life. It's what you do with your life. Do you know your life, you can be anything you want, you can do anything you want? We're going to talk a little bit about Esau tonight. But don't let your life be like Esau. Don't sell your inheritance and your life short and give your blessing away before your blessing is due. So many times in life, I want to ask you a question. You think about this through the service. What is tripping you up in your recovery? Who is tripping you up in your recovery? But it's one question you better find out and ask yourself. If it's a person, you better get rid of it. If it's a thing, you better get rid of it. If it's a place, you better quit going to it. What is tripping you up here tonight? Think about that through this service. And I'm going to ask the question at the end. But tonight, I think Ben just got everything. Well, he'll have it pulled up. But we're going to be coming out of three different sections tonight. But the first one is uh, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verses 12. I love 1 Corinthians. Matter of fact, I love the whole Bible. Amen. Yeah, Do you want to know something I told Brother Green today? It's one thing to read a scripture. But when you start digging that scripture and start deciphering it, and, and, and letting that scripture take you to other books in the Bible and seeing other things that's lining up with the scripture. You find yourself with a half a piece of paper, a whole piece of paper, and then you find yourself with four pieces of paper. And then you find yourself want to keep going, keep going, and keep going. That's when the word of God is getting in your heart. That's when you are learning something and you having, you're having time with God. But how can we have time with God? How can we draw close to God when we know nothing about His Holy Word? I think we owe it to ourselves tonight. If you have a Bible, wipe the dust off from it and start opening it up and reading it. Get your good study book, get your good uh, Bible dictionary, and you start learning the Word of God. And you start checking behind me. You start checking behind everybody you get under. To make sure that they're telling you the truth and that I or anybody else is not misleading you. You owe it to yourself. It says, be aware of the sheep's and wolves' clothing. Be aware of the false prophets. Be aware of the people that are storing God's word and giving you the wrong word of God. Because at the end of the day, it's got a lot to do with how it determines your life. That's why you need to study. You need to get involved in Sunday school. Matter of fact, you do need to get involved in Sunday school. Amen. Sunday school is where you're going to get your most learning. You're not going to learn it from me. You're just going to hear the Bible. Amen. But Sunday school is when you actually break down and you start to read your Bible and you understand what the words mean. You understand where Hebrews is at. You start learning where Genesis is at. You start learning where Revelations is at. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? But Genesis is at the beginning and Revelation is at the end. But sadly to say, it's some people out there that don't know what Revelation is in the Bible. It's because nobody is teaching them the Bible or they do not want to learn the Bible. But we pray here tonight that souls will be touched by God's word. We pray here tonight that somebody will get something out of this. But we also pray that the Holy Spirit will move on hearts tonight. And just try to not have any distractions that will block God's holy word. All right, let's get on in this. Um, chapter 6, verses 12 in 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any foods for, those, for the stomach and the stomach 
for foods, but God will, hold on, we on the wrong thing. Let's do it this way. Um, Hebrews, no, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. That's all right. Huh? Oh, he's going to have his time. He's still going to get it. Satan don't win in these games. He don't, does he? Nope. He only does what you allow him to do. All right, let's get into 1 Corinthians right here. Chapter 6, verse 12. Green, you ever had anything like this happen to you, brother? All right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to go with this, and we're going to see what happens. Y'all ready to go with this? Y'all ain't scared, are you? All right, because I'm scared to death up here. I'm lost. <laughs> oh, me. All right. 612, y'all see this? Chapter 6, that big 6. And that does say 12. verse 12. Amen? All right, now when I go to 1 Corinthians, I'm on 6, verse 12. All things are lawful, right? That's not what I studied today. <laughs> yeah, all things are possible through Christ, right? Hey, let's go with this and see what happens. Let's see what happens. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods. But God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Let's go right here. Now what little sense this is going to make. We're praying on a wing right here. We know that God's already prepared the scripture out. And he knows what we're about to say. Evidently somebody in here needs to hear it. But listen to verse 12. Freedom is a mark of Christian faith. Who believes that? Freedom from what? Sin and guilt and freedom. To use and enjoy anything that comes from God. To use and enjoy anything that comes from God. Isn't it much better to use what is from God? Amen. Isn't it much better to go by His will and His understanding and His guidance? It's a lot better than us looking at the world, thinking about the world, wondering what we're going to do to please uh, Sally next door or John down the road. But isn't it always better to use and enjoy anything that comes from God? Amen. 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 But Christians should not, listen there, Christians should not abuse this freedom. Amen. Amen. You should not take advantage of this freedom. You should treat it with reverence. You should give God all the glory. And you should live your life to please God and God only. Amen. But let's read that again. But Christians should not abuse the freedom and hurt themselves or others. Be careful who you step on. Be careful whose life you abuse. And be careful of the things that you are doing in God's eyes. Amen. But listen. One of these things. What can it be? One of these things. Drinking too much. Why do you say drinking? Drinking is a drug. Amen. Heroin's a drug. Amen. Amen. Anything that distorts your mind to take you to a person that you are normally not. It's a drug. Drinking too much leads to alcoholism. Gluttony leads to obesity. Amen. Amen. Anger leads to death. So think about these things. And I'm not picking on drinking. I'm not picking on just anything. But anything that you take advantage of is not good. But you can stay in God's word and you can get the nearest man. Amen. 
You can listen. You can read God's word. You can stay in his word. You can learn God's word. And guess what that's going to get you? That's going to get you a stronger mind. It's going to get you a deeper love in your heart. It's going to earn you a place in heaven with Jesus Christ if you choose to call his name and made him Lord of your life. But it says, be careful that what God has allowed you to enjoy doesn't grow into a bad habit. Be careful that what God allowed you to use do, do not grow into a bad habit that controls you. What controls me, Jamie? What are you saying controls me? Money. Don't let money be the root of your life. Don't let money take your time away from your family and don't let money become your God. Amen. Amen. Don't go out here and want every woman in the world. Amen. Don't go out here and want every man in the world. Amen. You let God send you somebody and you let it be of God. You go by his commandments. Anything that you do that you get obsessed over is a bondage. Anything that takes you to a place to where you can't do without it is a bondage. Amen? Amen? Well, what I'm saying here tonight, I'm not picking on anybody, but I'm going to give you God's word and I'm going to tell you what we need to do to obey God's word. Now, you can go to here and live your life the way you want and that's your choice. You have the freedom to do that. Amen? God gave us a free will to go out here and make it a choice to put everything in front of him. But why should we after what God has done for us? We should enjoy the things that God has given us. But at the same time, respect what God has given us. Use it sparingly. Use it when you need it, when you have to. Because if you take advantage of it, how can you enjoy it? Because then you become a slave to what you enjoy. I got tired of being a slave. I got tired of being a slave to drugs and alcohol. I got sick of it because it took over me. It took over my mind. It took over my body. It took over my whole self-esteem. And it did what, what to me that it wanted to do. I had no choice in the matter. That's why I like to say I was powerless over drugs and alcohol. I was powerless. You know why? Because long as I didn't use, I was fine. But when I used, I couldn't stop. But if I don't use, I won't lose. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Let's say that again. If you don't use, you won't lose. Amen. But thank God for a mix-up at the beginning of the meeting. See how God works? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I know somebody needs to hear this tonight. It's not a coincidence and it's not a mistake. You may say it was an accident and turned lucky. It's no such thing as luck. It's all of God and God alone. Amen. God's got a purpose for your life. He's got a purpose for my life. And he's got a purpose for this meeting and where this meeting's going to go and how it's going to be used. Amen. 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 But listen, for more about Christian freedom and everyday behavior, read chapter 8 of 1 Corinthians. Now we can get going. All right, Benji, let's go to Hebrews and let's try this again. Let's go to Hebrews 12, verses 16 through 17. This is where Esau starts coming in. 12, 16. Least there be any fornicator or prof prof profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Can you imagine that? For one red lentil soup. He sold his birthright. Amen? It says in the study note in the Wisby Bible, it says he sold his birthright for one red lentil bowl of soup. What have you sold yours over? Did you sell yours for crack today? Did you sell yours for alcohol last week? Did you sell yours for heroin last month? What have you gave your birthright over to what have you given Satan to use to destroy your life here tonight? What did you give him here today to use against you to try to destroy you and kill you? Amen. Yeah. You ain't got to say it. And I know those words can be a trigger, but I've got to put it that way so you understand that this is not a game we plan. Right. 
that your decisions, your decisions that you make have horrible life-threatening consequences. Anything bad that you make a choice over, something bad is going to come out of it. I've never seen anything good come out of a bad situation unless God used a bad situation to glorify him. Now, we turn our life around and we repent our life and we get off of drugs and alcohol. We try to be obedient and live the best way we can. God's going to honor that because he knows that we're trying. Amen. But when we go ahead here and live our life like we're living for the devil and Satan itself, then God cannot honor that. God cannot be a presence of sin. God cannot bless you with any sin in your life, to be honest with you. What do we do about that, Jamie? We fall on our knees and we repent. And the word repent means to turn away, to get rid of. I told you last week, David killed Goliath, but not only did he kill him, but he cut the head off. He ain't got to worry about it no more. But he also picked the head up and bragged about it. Amen. What are you bragging about today? What has God delivered you from? And you're walking around bragging about it. Amen. You're led to say, no, look at what God done in my life. Look what God delivered me from. Look where God has got me in my life. Look at the book of God that I'm reading here tonight. Brag on God. Give God the glory in your life. It's not you, it's God, amen. You can do nothing, I can do nothing. You'll get a temporary peace out of your life that might last a little while, but that's all that's going to last. It's got an expiration date on it, and you back to the world looking for love, lust, fornication, anything you name. The whole list is what you're looking for to please your heart, to give your heart a desire that you can't get, that you have lost somewhere. But where you get it from, it's the name of Jesus Christ. You get it from the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. And if you get in the middle of the blood, the devil's not going to touch you. Because he can't come in the blood. Amen. 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 But at least there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau who were for one morsel of food sold his birthright. Now you have to understand Esau had a brother named Jacob. Jacob won't no perfect person either now. Who has tricked you like Jacob tricked Esau into doing something, amen? Who have you led in your life that has tricked you and caused you to stumble, amen? You better be aware of your surroundings. Amen. I'm telling you something. You may not be able to see Satan with horns sticking up on his head, but Satan can come in the presence of a man and, and, and trick you into destroying your life, amen? Amen. He can use people in your life to, to destroy your testimony. And I'm going to tell you up here tonight, you may say, well, don't nobody need to hear about that scary stuff. You better hear it because it's for real. And one day, you're going to either hell or heaven. And you're going to find out about the crafty person that I'm talking about. Satan, if you don't get your life right with Christ, right today, amen. I can't push you into doing it. I can never make you do nothing that you don't want to do. But I'm going to tell you this right now. It will be a day where your knee going to hit that ground and you're going to bow and you're going to wish to God that you would have done it when you heard that message in that church, amen. You're going to wish you had done it that day that you learned that lesson in Sunday school and you chose not to do it. Or you sit in that chair and you're too ashamed to come to this altar. You're going to wish one day and it's going to be too late, amen. amen. Now listen to this. Those consequences and that birthright right there. You sell something and you give something to Satan or you give something to somebody in this world that's going to hurt you dearly. But that causes that consequence. Even if you do have time to repent, even if you do have time to go to the Lord and say, Lord, forgive me of that awful sin that I committed. Forgive me for giving my life away and selling it short and, and, and getting my way out of something. But I want you to know here tonight, you still going to have consequences that comes with that, amen? Just because you live, give your life to Christ and you repent and turn it away, you still got to deal with that consequence. And that consequence does not come at a small price. It can cost you your life. It can cost you your family. It can cost you everything you work for. And you may lose everything, but you still got Jesus Christ in your heart, amen? Amen.
And I truly believe in the power of God. I truly believe if you give your life to Christ and you be obedient to him and you get yourself in this Bible right here and you read and study this Bible and you apply your life to this Bible, then God's going to bless your needs. Amen. Amen. Who believes in that tonight? Amen. Who believes in this Bible here tonight? Amen. 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 Better start believing in it because it's for real. It's not a fairy tale and it's not a joke. You understand? This is for real and you better get used to it. Because one day when you are find yourself sitting at home and you think you didn't skip, escape death and you think everything you got licked and you done fooled everybody in this world and you come to find out it's a knock on the door and Jesus Christ has come back and you ain't got your house in order, your house ain't clean, what's going to happen? Have you thought about, are you prepared for that day when he comes back and knocks on your door? Is your life in order for Jesus Christ? Because you are taking him everywhere you go. You're taking him to the dope house, the pill house, to the liquor hut, to everything else around here in this town. You are taking Jesus Christ everywhere you go. Think about that. He goes everywhere you go. But if you could really, really see him face to face right now, and he was standing there looking at this whole group right here. And I'm standing here face to face to him. Am I ready? I would say, no, I'm not ready. Because I have done some things today that I've got to repent for. It's things that I need to go to him and ask for forgiveness just from a thought in my mind. Just from an idea in my head. Just for an anger that popped up against somebody that comes out of nowhere. And you know where it comes from. Satan's going to do everything he can, y'all, to destroy you here tonight. Don't be like Esau. Don't be like him and sell your life short for a bowl of soup. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It might sell, sound crazy, but when you go out here and you squander your life away, you think about it. We went over here and got hooked on drugs. We went over here and got hooked on alcohol. We made a threw our future away. All of us. I'm not just picking out. I'm talking about myself. I threw my life away. But God gave it back to me through his son Jesus. Amen. 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 Drugs and alcohol, yes. They make you feel good. Yes, they take you to a place when you're depressed and you can't get your mind wrapped around your life. And it makes you feel good for a little while. But what is it doing to your future? Amen. What is it doing to your family? What is it doing to your kids? It's destroying your family. It's splitting it. You might as well be shoving your family out the door because when you're hooked on drugs and alcohol, you are not doing your family any good. Amen. And the thing about it, as, 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 as you are doing it, you don't see it like that because you are blinded. You are so blinded that you are justifying everything that you're doing. Oh, God knows. You know that i got a rough life. God, you know I done had some bad luck and I can't get a job, God. You know I've got to do this. Do I go crazy? All that is a trick. Let me tell you something. If you let Satan stay in your house, he's going to rule your house. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm doing a lesson Sunday on binding Satan. And I want everybody to tell everybody to be here because you need to know how to fight your battles. Amen? If you don't know how to fight your battles, you're going to be destroyed. And I know strong Christians out there that knows this Bible by the back to the front, to the front, to the back. They struggle. They've had members of their family go through counsel. They've had another loved one that died back to back. But they still holding on, amen? They still holding the faith. It's that many of them, I ain't going to say it's a lot of strong, but it's a lot of them out there that's got Jesus Christ, amen? amen. And Jesus is going to fight your battle. He's going to strengthen your heart. Amen. And you ain't got to worry about finding ways to fight your battle because he is fighting them. Amen. A lot of times he fighting them. he's fighting them and we don't even take time to see him fighting them. Right. A lot of times in days that you're lonely and you're depressed and you don't want to live, he is dispatching his angels out and hovering you. The Holy Spirit is in your heart, just quenching, quenching your thirst, giving you, filling your body up with love. All them days you ask yourself, well, I don't know how I made it through it. I can tell you how you made it through it. If you got Jesus Christ in your heart, Jesus got you through it. All right. Even repentance and forgiveness do not always eliminate sins 
consequences. Amen. Not, not sins, but consequences. How often do you make decisions based on what you are now? And I've got wrote down here, it's in parentheses, it says, drugs. What will give you, what will, get, what will you give up for it? What did you give up for drugs and alcohol? Exactly. Exactly. And if you could have gave up more to get more, you would have found more. Amen? How many times do we quit? You want to know when we quit? It's when we are six foot under or we didn't got rid of everything we got. We ain't got no family. We ain't got no house. We ain't got no place to stay no more. Amen. We're having to walk the streets, beg and borrow. But you see what Satan has done to your life? Amen. You see the blindness that you have gone through when your family said, please stop. Please stop. And not an hour go by. You're back doing it again. Your kids come and back you and yank you on the shirt tail and say, Daddy, please stop that alcohol. Please stop. Your daughter's coming up. Daddy, please go with me to church. Mama, please go with me to church be in my life. I want to hear about Jesus. You know how many kids is out there that's pulling on shirt tails. That's begging their parents to come to churches. But their parents are too blinded to see it. If that don't break you down, and if that don't want you to change, I don't know what's going to make you change when a child comes up to you and say, Daddy, I want you to come to church with me. Mama, I want a better relationship. Grandma, I want to come stay with you because I'm scared to stay at home. There's so much of that going on. We've got to pull it together as brothers and sisters. We've got to go here this community, and we've got to try to reach every soul out here. Amen. Amen. I can't do it. You can't do it by yourself. But a group like this, we can reach a lot of people. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, well, Jamie, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. There's nothing we can do about it. Yes, it is. It's never too late. Amen. We need to be working harder now than we ever worked. We need to be going out here spreading the gospel to families, to kids, to who all will listen. And don't worry about what people think about you. Don't worry about your old friends that you drink with. How they going to call you a punk and this kind of stuff. I'll tell you something. When Jesus Christ come back, you're going to wish that you were that punk. That you wish you were that church boy. That you wish you were that church girl that went by the word of God. Because you ain't going to have many obstacles, I mean, um, options left when that day comes. Make sure tonight that you got your heart and your life right with Christ. And I tell you every week that I'm never a self-righteous person. Most of y'all been with me for a long time. A lot of you have been with me since day one. And yes, I do get frustrated. Let's get it straight now. I do get frustrated when I see you turn your life around. But what can I say to you when I'm out here doing the opposite things? I might not be going back out here and renting my truck out. I might not be going out here and falling back down and getting back on drugs. But I got other sins in my life that I have to deal with. Amen? So I can't judge you for it. But I will tell you what you can do to get rid of it. Amen? We're the body of Christ here. We got to come together. We got to pray for each other like no other. We got to be each other's brothers and sisters. I won't say friends. We need to be closer than that. We need to be brothers and sisters. Amen? We got to pull it together as the body of Christ and we got to figure out a way to keep people back off the streets. We got to figure a way to get people from walking the streets, amen. We got to get out there and give them the love of Christ through us. And I know I've got way off, but the whole lesson's been way off to start with, so that's where God wants us to go and that's where we're going and I'm proud of what I said tonight, amen. Not because I said it, but because it was the word of God because I had none of this planned. I will tell you tonight, that I made a boo-boo, that I didn't got my papers mixed up. I'll be honest with you, I don't know what happened. I am just as lost up here. I had stuff wrote down. My study notes is not matching to my scripture. My scriptures is not matching to the words. And I'm like, Lord, help me. Please help me up here. Don't make me stand up here and look crazy. <laughs> no. 
That's how I felt at the beginning. I ain't going to lie now. I said, here I am. I've done this for seven years, and I just got up here tonight. look like my first day. But I think uh, God gave us the right choice tonight. Because you know what? God don't make a mistake. But you know, I used to be quiet in my life, and I used to be quiet, and I would be scared to get loud. But the more I read this Bible, and the more I get up here behind this pulpit, the loud I want to get so. I'm not going to apologize for that. But I do want y'all to do one thing for me. This altar call tonight, we need to fill this altar up. Because let me tell you something. None of us in here are righteous. No, not one of us. Every one of us in this room has done something today. What it is, I don't know, but God knows what it is. We need to take the end of this meeting after share group. As a matter of fact, if you feel like coming up here right now, we'll put a song on. Don't ever be ashamed. If any time you need to come to this altar, you get out of your chair and you walk to this altar and I will stop doing what I'm doing and pray with you. And I mean that. Bob, I tell you, all of us is in agreement with that. Don't worry about the meeting. If you got Jesus Christ on your heart, if you got something in your life that you want to give God that's bothering you, you get out of your chair and you come up to this altar and you lay your life out up here. And I will stop this service and we will stop doing this and I will walk down there and we'll get other people in here to pray with you. That's not a problem. So don't ever feel like that you can't get out of your seat. If you say, Jamie, I can't wait to the end of service. I need to do it now. You come right on. Nobody's going to talk about you. They better not. Nobody better not laugh neither. Because only God can fix your life. And I think if you come up here, everybody will respect that. I know they would. But so... With that said, if nobody needs to come to this altar, we will give you another chance. We're going to have an altar call at the end. But if you say, Jamie, I can't even go through the share group. I've got to get some in my life straight with God right now. We'll hold off a share group and we'll go on and open this altar up. So I'm going to give you about two minutes. And while we're doing that, waiting on that, I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly and Most Gracious Father, Lord, we thank God for your Holy Spirit coming through. Lord, we just thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your grace. And Lord, we thank you for this soul tonight. We thank you for hearts wanting to change their life. And we just thank you for your gracious love that you give us. Lord, just let something be said tonight and share a group. Or let, let somebody come to this altar, Lord, that just needs to pour their heart after you. And Lord, just give us the wisdom and the correct words to say to be able to help them, lead them closer to you. And Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask all this in Jesus.